Hey guys, so this is a common situation where the images on a website all need to be the same height and width. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop. So this is a website that I'm updating right now with more products for this garden arts section. And as you can see, all of these product photos are the same width and the same height. And now, this isn't always how you get the photos. In fact, it's rarely how you get the photos and it's important that they're all that size, so how do we deal with that? So I'm going to save, I've got one of these photos, I can open it up in Photoshop, just to get the exact height and width to start with. So this is just one of those images that I pulled off of the website to get the uh, perfect height and width. So this is like, I know that I'm starting with the, the right dimensions here. And now this is the one that I'm gonna be working on. I'm bringing in the other file, clicking and dragging it in, and there we go. So this is the one I was supplied. And as you can see, it's too tall for the, 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 uh, the dimensions that the other photos are. So I need to make this one a little bit wider. And I'll show you a couple techniques for that. So I'm gonna deselect the, uh, or I'm gonna hide the background so I can see where I'm working. And I'm gonna right click on this layer that I just brought in and I'm gonna rasterize it because, and you have to be careful where you click it. If I right click the image, it's not gonna give me the rasterize option but let's click over on the name for it and rasterize layer. Now it's all pixels and now I can manipulate it a little better. With my marquee tool here, I'm gonna click uh, rectangular marquee. I'm gonna click that and I'm going to select the area that I wanna fill in. And then if I hold shift and delete, so I, I'm holding the shift key and I'm pressing the delete key, bam, it's gonna bring up my fill options. And it says, I don't know what it's gonna default for you guys, but if you select content aware, and make sure the opacity is at 100 and then click OK. It does a pretty good job of just filling all that in. I'm gonna hold command, uh, hold down the command key and press D and that just filled it all in. Photoshop CS5 can do a pretty damn good job of that. But you've got like some repeating elements over here in the background. It looks kind of weird. There's like this blurred area. I'll show you a better way of doing that. So I'm gonna undo what I just did by holding command option at the same time and then Z or Z. And that undoes what I just did there. And I'm gonna use my marquee tool again, making a new selection. And I'm gonna use a lot of the image here. So I'm gonna select pretty close to her. I'm not gonna grab any of her though. And I've got this nice big selection and I'm gonna hold down Command and press T and that transforms or allows me to start transforming this layer. It gives me these handles on the side of the box. And I'll click and drag that out. And that stretches the photo. So that's, strictly speaking, I just pressed Enter to uh, to place it and then command D to get rid of it. So strictly speaking, that isn't good, uh, pure photographic editing, but for editing an image that we just need like a good thumbnail preview, like that, that is fine. Like we've stretched the pixels, we've lost a bit of quality in this area of the photo, but at first glance, I mean, we're, we're gonna be viewing this thing at this size. So that looks pretty sharp, that looks good to me. And now, what we're gonna do as well is if we if we do the same kind of thing where we're dragging this area and then doing a command C to copy it and then a command V to paste it. So you can't see anything that happened there because it just pasted it over the existing pixels. But if I hide uh, these layers, so this is the layer I was working on. This is what I just pasted. I'm gonna show them both now. And I'm going to transform the layer I just pasted by holding down Command T. And now I'm gonna grab the left side of that and I'm gonna swing it all the way over here. So it's real stretched and real ugly until I grab the new left edge because I've flipped it. And if I meet this up on this other side or even just overlap it a little if I just to see how it looks and it looks pretty good and then press return, that's a pretty decent uh, thumbnail for this product. Um, it's a lot better than how it came in and we've got this like kind of symmetrical thing happening and that's totally usable for the website. So these are good background uh, manipulation strategies for using content aware fill if you've got Adobe Photoshop CS5 and if you have Adobe Photoshop like earlier than that, you can use these strategies I just showed you for dragging an image width wise and then to touch up areas that are uh, Maybe maybe that produces a bit of a line like a sharp line over here. You can soften that by Holding uh, pressing s that gives you your like sampling uh, Clone tool here and then when I hold down option it gives me a target That's going to tell me where what pixels are going to be painted over 
So if I'm holding the Option key and then I click here, those pixels are going to be painted wherever I use this brush. So I can like soften up that edge if I need to. And it doesn't look good on this one, but uh, you can see how in some situations that would be a useful thing to do to paint those pixels over and maybe get rid of some of that symmetry. Uh, so like down here, we've got some gravel and some rocks. I can sample some more rock there and I can kind of like smooth out that gravel a bit. Anyway, those are good back background fill-in strategies to get your uh, images all the same size and to make images that are too narrow or too wide uh, fit with the rest of them. So if that was helpful, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thanks.